composed of a series of relevant bands in the New York underground, life abuse bring a roughness and rawness that is often lacking in punk, where some metal feeling also creeps in and has a positive result. More than a super band, a term that has fallen into disuse, what's most interesting here is the music for those who had given up hope on more raw and powerful punk. Deliciously short, this is an album to listen to on repeat without getting tired of it. Undeath are back for their third album of originals and seem intent on making old school death metal more and more interesting. Rather than trying to sound more brutal and technical than their next door neighbors or even more classic, Undeath's greatest asset here on More Insane is the way they manage to create memorable, groovy songs that speak to the hearts of the style's more conservative fans, those who gave up on absorbing new things back in mid-1993. We love bands that leave us perplexed. The logo is typical of a doomed death metal band, while the cover and title take us back to something psychedelic and even space rock. The music, which at the end of the day is what matters most, is dirty, sludgy, monolithic doom metal, where the heaviness is interspersed, sometimes briefly, sometimes more deeply. As in, cosmic clairvoyance, with a remarkable sense of atmosphere. A mix that sounds fresh and brings excellent results. Second album and a guarantee that they'll attract more doom metal fans. Thirteen Forty Nine has always been a refreshing proposition within Norwegian black metal. They began their career when the hype was already entering the mainstream and were never a band bent on becoming a rampant music production line. Their albums have always been thoughtful and with the quality and dynamics that their fans have appreciated. The Wolf and the King continues that path with dynamic black metal that, rather than being a continuation of the Scandinavian black metal heritage, presents various solutions that make it a powerful work of extreme metal It seems incredible that Japanese band Envy are now in their 32nd year. What's less incredible is that the Ephemeris is being marked with yet another great album, their 10th original, which brings together all the elements we fell in love with a long time ago. When post-hardcore seems like a thing of the past, and it is, Envy remind us that rather than focusing on labels, it's the music that continues to speak loudest viscerally emotional and atmospheric music that we can't give up. We've often complained about how modern progressive metal ends up being all the same and bores us to death. And then we have bands like Mother of Millions and albums like this Magna Mater that leave us divided. At first it makes you want to take it back but at the same time, it also makes you feel that progressive, within our definition of the genre, isn't even a label that carries much weight. Of course, we have the elements here, but the band's focus is really on creating memorable and emotional songs. In fact, emotion is the great asset of what they bring us. The most skeptical may not be impressed at first, but it won't be long before they surrender to the richness contained in this album. Coretta's fourth album reveals them with their usual dynamics even more exacerbated. With an intriguing concept that reflects the proto-astral collision of the mythical Pangaea and the tectonic plates. Musically, we have an authentic journey through the world literally, where weight and atmosphere merge in a memorable way. That is, of course, if you're a lover of instrumental music. Being a niche, there's always the possibility that those who miss the voice can put this work aside. However, that can only be done if you don't risk embarking on this journey called Angel. Music 
The Belgians have always had a special gift for adding blackness to their post-metal. This is something that becomes completely transparent with KRVL's second album, Don't Carry Pay, when music goes beyond simply putting together notes, patterns, riffs and rhythms and makes all these very concrete concepts completely abstract in the face of the emotions they arouse. It's a sign that we're dealing with something quite special. There are some more direct and conventional moments, such as Dave Lauren Herder, that still manage to have an overwhelming impact. Due to the atmosphere created, and because they take us back to a time when extreme metal was more mysterious, or at least we were more ignorant, but happier. And if there's any doubt about that, just listen to the latest work by Funeral, who on this new album evolve but maintain the melancholic and heavy essence of their music. The voice of Eric Crockfjord, here making his debut as a vocalist, has a strong operatic voice. The orchestral elements also appear more organically, bringing Funeral closer to what Therian would do if they were more dark, heavy, and depressive. More than an hour of rich music, with special guests such as violinist Oyvind Rosset from Folk, vocalist Espen Ingeard X Beyond Dawn. A passionate and demanding album. I've always been an advocate of Garia's not quite fitting into the black metal category, an opinion not well understood by many. Coma sees the band making obvious what has been obvious to us for a long time, despite including, as always, elements of black metal as well as other forces in extreme music, they definitely take on the post-metal elements that have always been present. The result in the context of Coma is a record where the melodies are more present and the atmosphere is deeper. It doesn't stop being violent, it doesn't stop being deep in its lyrical concept, They've just found the perfect balance after Mirage that didn't quite fill the bill. <laughs> 